Hi, my name is Will and welcome to the Distorted Transmission for today. I'm talking to Nelson Pop Punk Band Grip Tape. That was a mouthful. How are you? I am very good. Thanks, Will. Good to be here. Cool. Please tell me who's in the band, what they do, um, all that sort of stuff. Sweet. So the current lineup is um, a fellow Nelsonite called Jack Rollinson, killer guitarist. Um, and we have Thornton Church, who's from Blenheim. He's on drums and guitar, and he does a bit of everything, really, to be honest. And then I'm Sam Edmonds, and I'm on, I guess a bit complicated, but I'm on a bit of everything as well. So you're not the drummer. I just assume because you're sitting behind a drum set and you play the drums, and, and that's how I kind of know you, that you're in fact not the drummer of the band. Is that right? Well, yeah. So I should explain. It's, it's a bit confusing because I... On all the recordings, I play the drums um, and I do the vocals on all the recordings. Um, the latest recordings, I just do the drums and just do the vocals. But live, I play bass and do the vocals. <laughs> so it's a bit a bit of a unique situation. Was the band kind of like your brainchild then? Is that would, that would that be fair to say? Yeah, I think it is. That's definitely how it started. Yeah. Well, my next question, as always, is the basic history. So we've kind of touched on that already. So if you could tell me about the sort of the inception of the band um, and how it sort of came to be the band that is now. I'd moved back from Auckland because I'd spent a few years up there doing music. I came back to Nelson and I wasn't super busy with music, but I was looking to get busy with music. So I had an idea of, and I'd always had this idea because I'm usually a drummer. And that's, and I'm always going to be a drummer. That's like my main, my main thing. Um, but I kind of wanted to give maybe doing vocals a go and maybe playing a guitar or bass just to see what that would be like if I could do it. Um, and I guess the main reason for starting a band like Grip Tape was a desire to hear um, the certain type of music that I listened to a lot growing up that I felt wasn't getting the representation that I thought um, that I really was wanting to see, uh, that being like the pop punk kind of genre, sounding like Blink-182 is clearly our biggest influence. Um, and ever since I first heard Blink-182, I was immediately drawn in and excited by how, how cool the guitars sounded and the drums sounded and how happy but high energy it was. And that sort of fast, happy pop punk that was in a lot of skate videos that I used to watch growing up. And it kind of matched how fast paced and high energy skateboarding was. So, right. and then there were all these other bands came out after Blink-182 that, that were pop punk, but it kind of lacked a lot of the raw energy. I just thought I should maybe start my own band and see if I could do it. <laughs> see if I could, see if I can uh, capture that feeling that I got when I first listened to Blink. When did you actually start? I guess I had the original idea in probably the end of 2018 um i didn't know how to play guitar or anything could only play drums i didn't know how to sing uh, and so i just started like programming like little midi synths and then distorting them through like a cheap distortion plugin uh just to make it sound somewhat like maybe what a guitar could potentially sound like it was terrible but um then my mate sam uh butler who is an incredible composer and guitarist and has all the really nice plugins to make guitar sound good. I sent him the idea and was like, Hey dude, could you like try play this on a guitar? And is it going to turn into anything? Like, have I done this right? And it, I, he, he's, he's an incredible musician. So he probably spent like 10 or 15 minutes on it max. And he sent it back to me, uh, this first idea. And it, it immediately just, felt like exactly the feeling I was wanting to recreate. Uh, and I was like, dude, that's it. I'm going to make this a band now. So it's all thanks to Sam Butler. When you were mentioning like like using synths and then putting distortion on them, I sort of imagine this kind of hybrid of like the old Doom music from from the 90s. And it, 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 it. Great soundtracks. Which is just since it were distorted to sound like to sound like guitar. Yeah. Mixed with pop punk, that would have been quite a different game. <laughs> kind of thinking about reintroducing some synths, eh? Could be interesting. Could be awful too. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? Have to try it. <laughs> uh, it's time uh, for the musical output dissemination. 
I suppose. Uh, EP1 dropped in 2021 with six tracks. Yeah. After that, a single in 2022 called Not Getting Any Stronger. Yeah. Then, strangely, a single in 2023, which consisted of two songs. I've never seen that before, like a, a, a single that was two songs. So the first song was Had I Waited, and the second song was In the Heart of the Woods. That, so that was pretty pretty clever, I thought. Um, yeah. <laughs> sort of smashed them into one single. Uh, <laughs> and, and that brings us uh, to the most recent release from last month, namely uh, Bailing Out, which, as far as I can see, might win the Emmy for Best Use- Usage of a Handheld Fisheye Lens for a music video. <laughs> Uh, we'll see. So tell us a little bit about the song. What's it about? Apparently you wrote the lyrics. You know, you're not strictly the drummer, um, not in a live context anyway. So uh, you wrote the lyrics. So tell me about the lyrics. It was a little bit of a group effort on the lyrics, to be honest, but I probably was the main the main lead on the lyrics because I was singing it. Um, but it's about, um, well, <laughs> actually, the initial idea, and this is what happens with a lot of grip tape songs. I love video games. So I get a lot of inspiration from video games. And that game was, uh, sorry, that song and the lyrics was heavily heavily inspired by a video game called Elden Ring, which came out. uh, Everybody knows what Elden Ring is. Yes. (laughs) It's a big one. It's a great one. Go play it. Uh, So that sort of kicked off the song. And we just looked up some imagery of that game and just got inspired uh, uh, just to write about it and just about um the different areas and the feelings it gave me um going exploring those different areas in particular there's this area uh underground called uh, i'm not sure what it's called actually i've forgotten i'm not i'm not a real fan obviously but um it's like this soft soft softry something like that it's like the starry place but it's underground um and hence the lyrics down underground this place of knowing it's actually that's um in the chorus of the song and that's actually about uh, or heavily inspired by the Elden Ring location. Um, and then we kind of expanded it into actually some a bit more, you know, real life uh, situations of just finding a really cool place and wishing your friends and family were there with you and not wanting to leave this place, um, which is, yeah, I've been in those places before, so it, it came from came from the heart eventually. But, yeah, started off. Inspired by Elden Ring. There was a track earlier on um, called "Not Getting Any Stronger," which was also game related. So, I, I, I guess that's <laughs> I guess that's part of living in Nelson. There's not a hell of a lot to do except game, skate, and write music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That uh, that uh, brings us to the next question. Um, Facebook told me that you had a show in Nelson in May, and when I first read that, when I was sort of like getting all the information together for this interview. Uh, I, I didn't actually realize that you were from Nelson. So so my initial thought was, oh, wow, Nelson, wow, they're, they're playing, you know, in these sort of faraway remote places. That's that's pretty interesting. And then I found out that you're actually from Nelson, so it was just down the road. So it was slightly less impressive. But uh, how uh, how was the actual show? Was it, was it a good turnout? And my following question is, what, what's it like being in a band from Nelson in general? Yeah, great questions. The show was incredible. Uh, it was an awesome lineup. We had Grip Tape and this other band I play in called Deranger, sort of a heavier sort of punk metal crossover. And then this other newer band from Nelson called Sawn Off played as well. Have you heard of those guys? I've seen their names around, yes. Both of those bands. Mm. Yeah, they're killing it. Yeah, Sawn Off are awesome. Uh, I've known them from ages ago and they're putting on the show uh, as like an EP release show. And they're sort of like a... I don't want to get my subgenres wrong here, but they're sort of like a slam, you know, pretty heavy metal slams type of band. Uh, but those dudes are awesome. And they asked us to play um, just to fill out the lineup. Um, so it was an awesome show. It was packed and we hadn't had a show like that in Nelson for ages, uh, partly due to COVID and partly due just to the scene was sort of drying up a bit um to be honest but everyone was out that night and it was just a sweaty mosh pit of doom and it was just incredible <laughs> maybe not for our set there's a few people boogieing around but that's all good we're just the warm-up but um it kicked off later and it was awesome what is the sort of should we say the scene like in nelson generally speaking it's it's not really a massive music town is it no i think it used to be i keep hearing about it like 20 25 years ago it was this big musical hub people all, all the touring bands would come through uh and it sort of got a little bit 
sad on the music front, to be honest. There's a lot of bands doing some cool stuff, but uh, I think just the culture sort of shifted. Less people started coming out to shows. Bands would kind of skip us on their way down the coast to Christchurch. Uh, and it kind of made sense. It was a bit out of the way for them to play to like 10 people, you know? <laughs> so I guess they can play in Wellington. And I suppose if, if you're a real hardcore fan, you can just catch the ferry over. It's not too much, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. To be honest, it's it's coming back. I play in a few different groups around town and there's always been there's always been a lot of potential here. Uh and especially as the region's growing. Um, but it's always met with a lot of resistance because a lot of people move here, a lot of older people move here to retire, a lot of young couples move here to settle down, raise families in the quiet sort of seaside town. And I totally get that appeal. Um, but there's also I mean, there's a lot of bogans here, man. Like, to be honest, it's bogans everywhere, metalheads, you know, and they're very passionate about music. So, um, yeah, we uh, we just keep shipping away. And recently, in the last few months, I've seen more and more people and more and more support for live music. So I'm thinking we're going to have a reasonably busy summer because there's some cool stuff coming up. So I think it's getting better. Nice. Well, actually running out of time, believe it or not. So um, I should probably jump on this oh, one. Uh, that's all right. A any shows coming up? Uh, we're sort of holding off a little bit with Grip Tape on um, booking shows. We're sort of entering uh, a new chapter for the band, to be honest. Um, you might have heard it in the sound uh, of the new single. So we're just going to sort of take a breather from the live shows and just sort of rethink. Maybe, you know, in early into the next year, we might revisit and just see what we can do with the songs. So nothing booked yet, but we'll see. All right. And is there anything else you'd like to uh, mention before we uh, wrap up the interview? Quite often bands like to have a little spiel at the end, so you have this opportunity. Yeah, oh, sweet. Thanks, man. Our latest single, Bailing Out, is actually one of five songs off a new EP that we did with my brother, Josh, in Auckland, uh, and that will be coming out later in the year. There was actually that, that a last question that I was going to ask. Let's see if we can squeeze it in. Yep. Um, when when I was looking through all, all your band camp, it sort of lists um, you know, producers, mixers, masters for for each release, and it used to be Sam Edmonds, which is you, yeah, and the most recent one was Josh, which is your brother, yeah. Um, so why did he sort of take over that? Was this because you're going for a different sound and he he had a different angle on it? And and why can both of you mix and master? That's unusual. Yeah, because the, the whole essence of, of Grip Tape initially was it was it was my band and it was just a solo. It was just me. I, I ended up learning some basic chords and I played all the guitars, all the drums. I sung. I mixed. I had a go at mastering. Like you know, oh, actually, my uh, my my mate mastered it. But um, it was a one man band. I I did everything. Uh, I had a go at it at least. And then um, the new stuff. My brother is a producer in Auckland. And we used to play in bands together. And he was like, dude, why don't you come up and we'll record some songs, bring the other guys up and we'll make it like a bit of a team effort this time. And I was really keen for that because I'd sort of exhausted the four chords that I knew how to play. So I was like, okay, <laughs> let's, you know, I, I like writing music with my friends. So we gave that a go. Um, and he's a, he's a total whiz bang uh, producer, specializes in vocal production and stuff. So uh, yeah, he just, it was awesome working with him, eh? And hence the kind of change of ch change of sound, change of style. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. It's a bit scary making that, you know, turning turning the page a bit and going into the next chapter. But the old songs are still there, especially when it's your your baby. I suppose, like like hand, hand, you basically hand, handed your baby over to the education system and said, you know, please raise my child right. But now it's in the hands of strangers. <laughs> yeah, it was it was really scary. It it took me a while to get my head around it. To be honest, I was like, "Is this the right thing? Is this the right decision?" But I, I don't know, man. When is the right decision? We've got to give it a go. So the old songs aren't going anywhere. So I just wanted to write music with my friends. All right, Sam. I guess we should probably wrap it up. But thanks very much for um, having a chat tonight. Best of luck with everything. Sweet. Thanks, Will. Thanks for having me. Keep on putting up your drum covers because I do actually enjoy watching them. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, it's fun. All right, well, best of luck and say goodbye to everybody. See you, everyone. <laughs> and thanks for watching.